Hello everyone and welcome to Loco Shortline Operations. So, you're new to the game, probably watched the videos from Heist and thought, that looks fun, I want to go. But you're not really sure how to get going. Well, I'm here to do a few short tutorial videos, give you the basics and hopefully get you on your way to running your own Shortline Operations. Uh, let's run the intro and we'll get into it. So here we are on completely brand new save game, completely fresh, no locos, no tracks, no anything. So I can help you best to get started out. Now, first thing you're going to be tempted to do is come here and look at all the shiny locos you could potentially buy and have fun with. And I'm going to say, don't get too engrossed in that just yet. What you want to be focusing on is track building first, because getting a shiny new train is no good if you can't run it anywhere. So I have switched on all of the UI. Give you as many tools as you're going to need. And you can switch it on and off by holding F10 or press F10, sorry, and it'll bring up the screen. Now, if you hold left alt, it will allow you to interact with this so you can switch money on, off, all the different options. And then you can close it, and there we go. So, track building. Very simple, actually. Um, You'll see in the bottom right hand corner, it says rail type V. That is how you switch between the different tracks. Now you may be wondering why would I want track without sleepers or sleppers as it says there. I'll actually have to point that out to Joe and get that changed. But the reason you'd want track without sleepers is certain bridges and what have you. You may want to label that. But anyway, we're going to stick with standard gauge. 14, 30 mil. And if you go to the end of the track, you'll see there's B to link rail off the end. Or anywhere you are in the world, you can click B and start the lay track. Now, when you're starting out, I am going to say that when you've got your track set, L and P are going to be the first buttons you want to press. And the reason for that is it locks, it, as you can see, if you move, it locks it on a straight line. So that is going to help you to start to do straight track because it can be so easy to just get it a little off kilter and you end up wobbly tracking. You know, it's fun for a start, but when you get into building your big massive lines you're probably going to want your track straight you're thinking well that's great but now how do i curve it simple use q and e and as you'll see on the bottom left hand corner where it says toggle or no corner you can see there's degrees and if you hold shift i believe it is yeah you can slow that down so you can Control it and get your 0.5 much easier. So, anyway, we shall take a look at the map next and try and work out where we want to build from. So, from spawn, your first stop is going to be standard goods supplies. Obvious to most people because that is going to be 
where you get your starter block from, essentially. Most stuff, I say most, because you do have coal that is raw material. But most stuff you're going to produce from standard goods. And then if we come down here, you can see coal mine. And then you've got heavy goods down there. Now, just do this. Zoom out. Maybe tempting. And if you guys are here from Heist, you'll have seen him connect Hearts Creek first. And that's not a bad shout. You know, it gives you somewhere to sell your standard goods and make cash. But I would recommend, although it looks further, go for your heavy goods first. Because that is going to not only give you somewhere to sell your standard goods, it's going to allow you to produce more valuable goods. So anyway, track lane. So if we click B on here, you see it remembers that we've got LMP selected. And the first thing we're going to want to do is just bring a single section of track. Now, if you left click, you'll see that it will continue on. But if you use enter, it will end that spline there. Now, the maximum it will lay is four sections, and then it will automatically finish it and create that spline. So four is your maximum with an exception, which I'll come to later. But for now, that is what you should be focusing on. So we're going to want to get over to that water tower. So this brings us to our other collection. So G is mainly scenic things. We spin that around. And then use T and Y to go through. You see speed limit signs. You've got your buildings. You've got a concrete wall. You've got some crossing lights there. And you've got some prefabricated bridge sections. One type is a swing bridge. The other one is an opening bridge. Now this. This is can be a very important tool and it's not realistic maybe but if any of you guys have watched my previous videos you'll know what this is and this is actually a re-rail so what you do is you position it like that over your track and when you activate it by pressing the red button it will close in and it will essentially squeeze your rolling stock and push it back onto the rails. But we don't want to worry about that right now. What we want is the end button. Because we want to lay a set of points. So go through and now we when you add it, it's probably going to try and put it in the wrong orientation that you want. Simply use the up and down arrows and you can alter the snap point. So that's one we want. And what we're going to do is lay nice three sections of straight. And go another one. I think that will set us about right. Yep. So we're going to select our once again. Use the up and down arrows once again and pop it there. Now, if you aren't too happy with this model railroad style gap in your sleepers, what you can actually do is if we delete that we've got two points to go from if you hit b on the link rail and drag drag it all the way up here 
you'll see it say connect. And then if you click once, you'll draw in the track, click X again, and there you go. One nice straight piece. And yes, we have the gap in sleepers at the end here, but overall not too bad. So from here, just going to lay our track. Just going to have to put a slight kink in. Bring us over to the water tower. Carry it on through like so. And then from here, what I'm actually going to do is come to this end first because I want to get a perfectly straight piece of track running through our cube over here. And this cube those who haven't seen the game before is where your goods are going to spawn from so you ideally want your track to be directly under that so that when it spawns they land directly on the wagons and Again, I'm just going to put a slight curve in the track there. And bring that out. Again, when you get quite close, you can just drag it out and get it to connect. And there you go. Little bit curvy there, but not too bad, not too bad at all. And what I know I'm going to want to do is have these points set to transport us over there. Now, this track we can use it for pretty much whatever we like. We can throw a bunch of sidings in here for storage or have an alternate route head out. But for now, we'll just leave that. And there you go. That is an easy, simple way of laying your starting track. And like I say, make the L and P button the first ones you press. In my experience and my advice, have the auto level and auto corner on. Use Q and E to your curves. You can still tilt the track up with or down with three and four. You can still do your super elevation with five and six. So that's not affected. You can still do that. But I prefer to let the game assist you when certainly starting out. There might be times when you don't want LMP on and you want to completely free hand your track. But for the most part, I'd remember recommend doing it like that all right i am gonna go ahead and time lapse some more tracking and show you how i would recommend going from start standard goods down to heavy goods so catch you in a second <laughs>
So you rejoin me doing the finishing touches to our track. Um, you may have seen me do at the end there is actually come back and relay this curve, place the track over the top of the existing one, and you can do that. But the joy of this is as long as you don't go to a snap point because it will come up with the connect message. If you're relaying over, you can lay multiple tracks and then you can just come in and or delete and get rid of the extraneous track. And yeah, it's a good way for just getting your track how you want them. And connect that in there. And that is that done. Now, there are some janky bits on this, and I am kind of rushing through this, so and just that's 1.5 degree. Yeah, so other than fact, it goes into that rather quick. Not too bad. Now, I did leave this here. And the reason I've not put any track over here is I want to show you. No, wrong button, Nick. Rather cool little thing you can do if you want your track to be perfectly aligned going over the bridge. Now, if you get a set of points, click the middle mouse button, it will rotate that track there perfectly. And what you can do is just come along to the edge here, place that, at least temporarily, hit your link button, straighten up your toggle auto corner, and that will give you a perfectly straight track over your bridge and then you can come in delete point work don't delete your bridge that would be try and shame delete that end and then go from this point again and perfectly straight over there as i say just add a little bit of kinkage in there And loop that on. There you go. Perfectly straight over there. And you see, I've been doing a bit of flying, and that is simply tapping the space bar. And if you press the Z button, as you can see in the bottom right hand corner, it says player lock. Press that, it will lock you in place. Excellent tools for surveying the landscape. Now, I'm kind of familiar with the general layout of this map. I'm not an expert on this map. I usually play map two, but I know enough that I don't have to survey so much. But it's an excellent tool for getting going. So, again, don't press the wrong button. I'm going to just line up this track here. And link rail. Make sure that's on zero. And boot that into there. Come along. Delete that point. Now this is a bit of a crude curve there, I will admit to that. But in a coming video, I will show you how to improve that. So you don't have those quite so crude curves. But anyway, we are gonna just put in a Small section of straight track. I'm just going to drag this out. Yeah, that is quite a curve. I'll admit. But our train should be okay with it. And 
just bring that in so it doesn't look quite so janky. Yeah, that's manageable. Um, delete that and all being well. Should be perfectly straight all the way up our long bridge. Now the reason I've gone for this is though it's not a very high bridge, as you can see the ground does undulate through here quite a bit and there really is no other way of getting through this path. And although it looks like we're going uphill. Which we are slightly. In fact, I think we actually are going downhill. So I think this way is slightly going up. I'm sure, I put a slight incline on there, in fact. Yeah. So we've got a long trestle in there. And as you can see, ahead of us is to bring up the map, is our marker, and there is heavy goods. And if I just hit this refresh track button, you will see that on the map, let's zoom in a bit, is this lovely red dot which shows us what we've built. Now occasionally it leaves gaps. We're not sure why that is, but don't worry, the track is there. And there we go, guys. That is tutorial number one over. Hopefully that's gave you a better idea how to lay track for yourself in this game. Got any questions? Pop them down in the comments. I will answer them as truthfully, as fully and as accurately as I can. If you have enjoyed this video, hit the like button, consider subscribing and keep an eye out because I'm going to have another one coming real soon, possibly even tomorrow. We'll see about that. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.